So, so today's topic is churn, churn uh, as, as related to uh, agile. Um, so this is our agenda. Uh, we are going to do some uh, ice breaking introductions, uh, and then we will discuss uh, various aspects of churn, starting with what in, what is churn, uh, how it impacts team stakeholders, how do you calculate it, uh, and then we will get into the root causes or why churn is created or what are the reasons for churn and then how do you manage it so it's a kind of uh, obvious things when you want to learn a new topic i don't know if uh, any one of you have uh, you know experienced that in the, in the past and then after this we'll have our usual quiz and then uh, q and a so uh, let's start with the expectation setting. Um, many of you joined my earlier webinars. We use a tool called as Menti. So here is how you uh, use this tool. You go to menti.com and use the code that is written here uh, and then type. So what are your expectations from today's presentation? What do you want to learn? Why are you here today? Uh, so those are the kind of things I, I would like to uh, like to see here. Uh, so on your phone, tablet, laptop, whatever you have uh, handy and yeah, access the internet. How to churn, how to churn in agile or uh, maybe it is how churn is created in agile or, or uh, whatever I think. Uh, that may be the right uh, question, okay? Um, what else? Anybody else? Mitigations, causes, okay? Very good, learn about what is churn, excellent. Ex understanding, okay, familiarization, introduction, very good. Very good. Um, learn about what is churn. Yeah, that's right. We'll we'll talk about that. How to calculate churn? Okay. Okay. What else? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, so this is little introduction about myself. Many of you may already know me. Uh, I am CEO and Enterprise Agile Coach since December 2011 when I started my company Refine M. Uh, and uh, the vision of the company is to help organizations turn their project management capability into a competitive advantage. So we are helping organizations to be um, to have a competitive advantage by delivering their projects in a predictable, profitable manner. Um, as a part of that, we uh, I am involved in a lot of agile trans transformation coaching engagements, uh, process improvements. Uh, a lot of trainings. Some of the trainings are mentioned over here. We have about more than 50 trainings that we have developed, and we have also developed a few products uh, that uh, that you can um, use, you can buy. Uh, and then, before starting my company for 25 years, uh, I did a lot of project um, management work, different aspects of project management work, agile work. Um, I was born in a town, very small town called Meerut in North India, and now I live in Kerry with wife and kids. Okay, so what is useful for you in Refine M? Something that is very relevant for you. So we will be talking about best practices for sprint planning, and our next webinar, uh, November webinar. Uh, at projectmanagement.com. So if you are a PMI member, you can 
go to projectmanagement.com and sign up for this webinar. It's free. Uh, if you are not a uh, PMI member, then probably you need to get the PMI member to access this and several other webinars. I do webinars at projectmanagement.com once every quarter, and all the recordings are available on projectmanagement.com if you want to go back and look at my previous webinars. Um, we have several products, as I was talking about, and self-paced trainings that you can access from our website, or a couple of them are also available on Udemy. Um, so like backlog refinement, self-paced course on Udemy, and we have just put a PMP exam prep simulator training on Udemy that should be active now. Probably we should include it somewhere here. Um, so, so a lot of things that are uh, available to you to improve your skills and advance your careers. So let's. Uh, so if you do not know churn, maybe uh, maybe you may not be able to guess this one. But let's try it out. So let's uh, go to Menti. Uh, and uh, if you can provide your input, how often do you experience churn on your teams? Sometimes, okay. Very good. Very good. Anybody else? Yeah. So uh, most of or all of you who have responded so far, all of you have not responded yet, but uh, those who have responded, uh, you face sometimes with uh, which was kind of expected. If it is constantly, then that's a very bad situation. Uh, some teams do have that situation too. Uh, OK, so let's go back here um, and uh, dive into churn in Agile. And uh, this picture is, um, you know, I was trying to find a good picture that represents churn. And as, as I will define churn, you will know that um, this picture is very relevant. And this topic of churn is not very common. Uh, there are a lot of people, scrum masters, product owners, project managers, who are not very familiar with it, but they, they get impacted by it. And as I go um, you know, in, into the following slides and explain this, uh, you, will, you, will, uh, you will feel that this is very useful topic to get a better understanding and uh, tracking in the teams. OK, so what is churn? Uh, so churn in Agile is created when stories, tasks, or defects are added to the sprint after sprint planning has concluded and sprint goals are finalized. So you finished your sprint planning, now you are running your sprint, okay? And then in between, you get, you know, request to urgent request, ad hoc request to include uh, a story or a task or a defect that was not initially planned. So it is basically a measure of unplanned or ad hoc work. Unplanned or ad hoc work. So if I say that, do you experience unplanned and ad hoc work in your in your uh, in your teams? Uh, probably most of you will say yes. You know, I have seen that team. I have not seen any team yet that will say that they don't experience this. So almost every team will have churn, you know, unless it's a very highly matured and, uh, you know, fully empowered team. Okay. So, so anytime you add a story task or defect to your planned work, a churn is created. Okay. Um, it is, as I was, it's the measure of unplanned work. It can derail your progress because you thought you will do these five stories and three tasks and two defects amounting to whatever story points. 
and now you got more to do right so it may impact your progress and also if it happens consistently it may create frustration and burnout i saw a team last year i was working with a team and team team was very very frustrated with this kind of ad hoc work dumped on them okay um so examples product owner is grateful for testing a new feature all of a sudden okay and uh, team member being pulled off his story for another task so what will happen that they will not be able to complete the work and that also create increases the churn and i will um, uh, very soon i'll show you uh, you know how you calculate it so how does it impact the stakeholders or why it is important to reduce or eliminate churn um, first of all if you keep having that ad hoc work it may impact your release schedule or con contents or both so several teams have a, a release schedule that they will complete the work every sprint but they may not release they may release once in two months or once in three months and for that release you have a planned you know targeted content that goes in the release so if you keep getting the ad hoc work that team has to do then uh, either the contents have to be modified or the schedule has to be pushed right or, or both so that's how it can impact stakeholders because stakeholders are the one who are getting the contents um so it it will affect the predictability because what they plan they are not able to finish and it will lead to uncertainty Uh, if there is less predictability there is more uncertainty and of course frustration and burnout uh, for the stakeholders it does impact the team too right uh, because it prevents them from completing their sprint goals okay uh, it affects their morale and which leads to burnout so so it's a it's a something that is uh, happens slowly the morale and the burnout but it does happen so if it is not contained if it is not managed then that will result in team morale and burnout okay so how it is calculated so it's a very simple maths that you apply to calculate calculate churn so is number of stories tasks defects added after the sprint was finalized anything that got added and it is not a story points okay it is not story points it is the um, you know task it is a work item a story or a task or a defect you can you know that a sprint can include any of these okay uh, divided by total number of stories task defects in the sprint at the end so when you close the sprint how many were there so how many got added after the planning was done and then how many were there when the sprint got closed okay so that's the simple kind of a formula to calculate churn i'll give you a couple of examples so it it becomes clear to you so if two stories were added to a sprint backlog that was finalized by the team with five stories so initially plan was five stories and two got added so with that formula it's pretty simple like right? 2 divided by 7 5 plus 2 so you had five you got two added so that's 29% so that's a number you get so if you apply that formula that's a number you get so higher that number bigger is the problem okay so if you have higher that number bigger is the problem now think of a situation the other situation here so you added two and removed two so what what if in addition to adding the two one story and one task were removed and they were removed because maybe the story was half done and it was moved to the next sprint or it was not attempted at all and that similar way the task was not completed so it was moved to the other uh, other uh, sprint or it was cancelled whatever you know it was it was so at the end of the sprint you are left with five you added two you remove two 
right? So at the end, you are left with the original one five, but your churn actually goes up. So your churn is now two divided by five instead of two divided by seven. So if you add and remove, because see what, what it is doing, it is creating more unpredictability. It is having team not to focus on the planned work. Right, that is what it is measuring. What kind of a disturbance it creates for the team uh, in, in for those uh, two, three weeks or whatever is the sprint duration. So, what kind of disturbance? What kind of you know uh, distraction it creates for the team? And because of this disturbance and distraction, the team member team morale will go down, motivation will go down, and and then they will team will start asking what's the fun of doing the planning even if we were to do this task these things are pushed to us and we have to do that uh, you know then what's the fun of doing any planning so those kind of questioning starts right so let's uh, let's uh, uh, does anybody has any questions about what is churn and how churn is calculated. For some of you, this may be a totally a new topic because this not a lot of literature available because we were trying to get some sources where we can, you know, we, that we can use to enhance our presentation. But uh, we didn't find too much. We didn't find too much. But this is something that is present and in my experience when I when I work with the teams, when I coach the teams, I see this happen. And and uh, uh, scrum masters, product owners, uh, they are helpless. No. So we'll talk about talk about the the root causes and all those kind of things. But so far, what I talked to you, what is churn and how it impacts and how it is calculated, so you have a better understanding of. Um, what what churn is okay? Why it is caused and how we can manage it? Those are the topics that we are going to discuss soon. Any questions? Anybody has any questions? They can put in the chat. I'm not looking at the chat, or you can unmute the microphone and talk. I uh, there are not a lot many people, so we can do that. Okay, so let's move on. Now uh, I wanted to do a, a breakout room activity, but Seems like Philip told me that technical there's some technical glitch and that is not working. So what we are going to do instead of doing this, uh, we will do all of us will do together. So there are three of these uh, activity or three situations. OK. And I will say you know, calculate this and you can you can tell or you can talk. Uh, uh, you know, or you can put uh, I'm not look, looking in the chat, so I will rather have you talk. So let's take, take number one. So it, we started with 10 zero tickets. And if two were added to the sprint, what will be the churn? So what will be the churn if two were added? Anybody? Somebody said something. I did not hear that. 17%. Yeah, 16.6, .6, right? <laughs> About, yeah, right. It is 2 by 12, right? Everybody, everybody is on the same page. Is yep. anybody getting any different result? OK, uh, so let's go to number two. So two were added and three were removed. So two were added and three were removed. What will be that? About 22%. 22%. Is everybody uh, okay with that? Yep. Yeah. So so that see the impact of removing three. Now your churn goes up. From 16%, it goes up to 22%. So I was showing you that 
picture at the beginning where you saw a line in the middle and then there are two lines, one going up and one going down. That the situation number two, you know, that that is the same as number two. So you are adding some and removing some. And in that case, the churn becomes more. Now it, it becomes more because more disturbance for the team, more deviations, more distractions for the team. Uh, what will be churn for the case three? Sorry, what was the case three? That number three here on the screen. What oh, will be the churn? Okay. Based on the formula, I guess it would just be uh, it would be zero. Yes, that is right. And I deliberately put this one. So basically what happens if you do not add anything. After the plan, you do not have any churn. You can remove things, but that is in the denominator. So it doesn't affect the churn. So churn happens. Only when things are added. Only when things are added. And when you add and remove, then it becomes more. Right, so if it is nothing is added, then there is no churn. So this is very important to understand. If there is nothing added, there is no churn. So if you can have the, you know, if your team doesn't face that, then you don't have any churn. So if you don't have any additions, then you don't have any churn. So I deliberately wanted to put this uh, kind of a little size uh, for a fun to look at, you know, how you calculate and uh, have a better understanding. No, nothing added, no churn. If something is added, there is churn. If something is added and something is removed, more churn. Right? So, so that is that is how this behaves. All right. Uh, so, what causes churn? So now you have understood it. Now you uh, you know know how to calculate it. So you, that would have that will clarify further. You know what is churn. So, what do you think? Um, what causes churn? Or what are the root causes? Why a churn is caused? Anybody? Well, well, to your earlier point, I mean, there are lots of reasons, aren't there? I mean, if you're talking about purely from a product owner's perspective, it could be just new requirements coming in. But if you factor in defects, that it could be that the development that you're doing is of low quality or the data mm -hmm. isn't right in various environments, so that leads into additional items coming in, which are defects. So there are mm -hmm. multiple reasons why churn will Yeah, be yeah. There, so so you, you said new requirements and defects, if yeah. I understand correctly, right? Yeah. So those are the two things you talked about. Excellent. Any Anything else? Anything else that you can think of or anybody can think of? I mean, there could be some uh, project management issues if uh, you know, there's too much flexibility and not enough rigidity, um, you know, that could that could create problems as well. Uh, can you give an example there? Well, I guess ultimately, if, if you've decided on what's going to be in this sprint and the window of opportunity has concluded, it, it's been decided on, um, but you're still allowing for additional um, new uh, additions. Uh, that 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 could be a challenge. Um, that should be maybe maybe wait for the next sprint. Right, right, and that is how Scrum actually works. Right, as per the Scrum, um, you are you you don't make any changes during the sprint. Sprint. So any new request, new change comes that goes into the backlog. It is groomed, prioritized, and then if it bubbles up in the priority, then it is picked up in the next sprint. So as per the sprint guidelines also, uh, teams should not take any uh, unplanned work during the sprint, right? That's how Scrum works. So, I see two so, other answers. Yeah, 
Somebody's saying I see something. two other yeah. uh, responses in the chat to issue management, the break fix. I think that's a good one. Then shifting priorities as well. Yeah, break fix, shifting priority. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good, very good. So, so let, let's look at uh, some of the root causes that I have seen. OK, that uh, and you are talking about, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. So urgent requests from legal or compliance area. And these areas will come to you. So we have to be compliant. There is no we cannot wait for it. We have to be compliant by this date. And they they might have that date uh, with them for quite some time, but they would not have communicated until the last moment. So, so that's the kind of a situation that cannot be avoided. And if your applications uh, or organizations have to remain compliant, particularly if you are in the, um, you know, financial sector, if you are in the insurance sector, if you are in such uh, government uh, areas or some somewhere, compliance and legal is a big deal, right? So, uh, so I. Uh, I and I, I have done coaching with insurance and finance both. And compliance is a big deal. Very big deal. Uh, sometimes you do a audit work. And audit finds a security breach breach. Now oh, that becomes very urgent. A security breach, we need to fix it. Right. So that could be one. And then emergency requests. People can come back and say, you know, uh, this is urgent and we need it, right? Uh, break fix, yeah, somebody pointed out break fix, uh, defects. Uh, so I, I am putting it here, only the emergency defects. Uh, you don't have to fix every defect that, is the defect that is reported in the same sprint. That can be put in the backlog and prioritized. But if a defect is like the sky is going to fall, then you got to. If you know the whole application is down or people are not able to use the application because of X, Y, Z reasons, right? Then that that's an uh, emergency defect or or break fix. So and uh, and uh, then uh, other possible root cause that there is no peer, there is no product owner, and the team is fully exposed to the to the users or stakeholders and. There is nobody who is coming in between and uh, deciding the priorities. Uh, or the PO is ineffective. The PO is there, but they are ineffective. Uh, or there are no working agreements. Uh, agile teams work based off working agreements. So if you are a scrum master, if you are a product owner, or you're part of an agile team, you may be familiar with this. And whenever you start a project, whenever you start a product team, you need to have working agreements. Basically, how we are going to work, what is our ways of working, that need to be defined. You know, so uh, in what cases you will take ad hoc work that goes in that working agreement, right? So those are the kind of things that if you do not have those working agreements, then uh, you know the rules of engagement uh, is. Um, they are ambiguous. And that can cause uh, ad hoc work to uh, to come in. So those are the root causes. And also, I have seen certain behaviors that can cause churn. OK, certain behaviors. So command and control culture. So you know Agile is a empowered empowerment culture. But the many organizations that are transforming to agile, they still have command and control culture. So if the manager says that we need to do it, team just does it. Right? Team just does it. That's 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 the kind of a culture you cannot question. You cannot ask for details. You cannot tell that no, we cannot do that in this sprint. This sprint is already you know, finalized. There is there is there is a very high level of command and control. Okay, uh, and then the Scrum Master 
is not able to protect shield the team. That's the responsibility of a scrum master. So if uh, if you are a scrum master or you know somebody who is scrum master, they are responsible for shielding the team, protecting the team. If they are not able to do it, then that uh, that may cause churn. Uh, and PO is not taking charge and pushing back the ad hoc work. So they are not functional, ineffective, like I was talking about. They are not functional. They are, they, they are not able to push back. Uh, other reason could be other behavior thing that product management is not mature. So there is no roadmap defined. There is no prioritization. Prioritization doesn't exist. There, nobody prioritizes anything. The team itself picks up and the work and they itself do it. I have seen certain situations where when I ask who prioritizes it, where we do it. OK. Uh, a team has an order taking mindset. OK, whatever is given to them, we have to do it. OK, there is there is no pushing back. There is no uh, asking for reasons. We, we got to do it. So that's that kind of mindset. Non adherence to working agreement. So I was talking earlier about absence of that. But if you have it, then nobody follows those working agreements. And also I have seen that upper management rewards churn. Oh, we gave these two additional things to the team and they delivered it. Hey, great team, right? <laughs> so so that's a kind of a reward. So if it happens once in a while, that's OK. Right, that is not a problem. But if it happens consistently, that's a problem. So once in a while, if some extra work came and the team, you know, took care of it, uh, that's great work. But if it keeps happening over and over and over again, uh, then there is a problem. Any questions on this slide? Do you see anything here that doesn't make sense to you? OK, all right, let's move on. So how do we manage your, so what a team can do? So I have put this in what a team can do, what a PO can do, what a scrum master can do. OK, so first of all, start with the team. Team is self-managed and empowered. OK, so if the team is not, then they should take help from agile coaches and scrum masters. To move from an order take, taking mindset <laughs> to a self-managed and empowered team. So they should they should take help. They should seek help. That how do we move from this order taking mindset to a self managed empowered team? How do we do this? Right. So agile coaches and scrum masters can help, uh, and the the team can push back where work that doesn't come through sprint planning process. So all the work, you know, there is a kind of a flaw that need to be maintained. So anybody requesting for any work that goes in the backlog, right? And then product owner works with the, the users and business and prioritizes it. And grooming happens. You know? And then when the things bubbles up the top, then it is taken by the team to work on it in the next sprint. So, so the team should push back. When some work comes to them directly, they should say, you know, put it in the backlog. Let the product owner request is escalate to product owner. Any extra work that comes, don't don't work on it. Right? Don't work on it. Uh, reserve and if you think that you will have to do some extra work or ad hoc work um, that is not avoidable. So you can see the pattern from the past. And maybe reserve some capacity for it. 10%, 15%, 20%. That you that you will leave for ad hoc work um, to be carried out. Uh, you know, uh, so that that will be helpful. Uh, and then regularly review churn trends. Look at what your churn has been. 
uh, that I calculate uh, churn, it's very easy to calculate, you know, at the end of the sprint. And uh, if you have tools, then, you know, tools will calculate for you. But even if you don't have tool, it's very simple calculation. And keep track of, uh, track of it and look at the trends in the retrospective brainstorm. So take take charge in your hands. That's what it is telling. Take charge in your hands and and uh, uh, manage churn. Uh, now, what a PO can do? Uh, work with stakeholders to ensure product vision and roadmap are clear and understood by the team. So, why product vision and roadmap are important? Because that sets the priority. Because that sets the roadmap says, okay, what is going to happen? First, then next, then next, then next. So, it, so it's important to have a vision and roadmap set. In absence of vision and roadmap, uh, it will be ambiguous, right? And that is where I was talking about product management is immature. So if you have a mature product management, then the product team will set up product vision and roadmap and product owner is kind of the person who facilitates that and then brings it to the team. Okay. So, and also ensure backlog is appropriately good with ample stories prioritized in ready state prior to each sprint planning ceremony. And this is important because if you take, you know, ungroomed story into your sprint, then that may basically, you know, get ballooned sometimes. And uh, you may not be able to finish it. And if you're not able to finish it, then it may increase your churn provided some ad hoc work came also at the same time, right? Uh, work with the team to make sure a sprint goal is identified and understood. So everybody understand that this is the sprint goal uh, and the product owner should push back any extra. That's the role of product owner to push back any extra work, any work that came that need to go to the product backlog, groomed, prioritized, and then given to the team to work on it. And then what a Scrum Master can do? Work with the team to make sure it's spent growth identified and understood. So product owner may bring it up and Scrum Master may facilitate that part. Uh, educate stakeholder in importance of allowing team to team to keep the sprint at the size they chose. Means allow the team to carry on the sprint goal without interruption. Why, what the why it is important for stakeholders because otherwise it is creating problem for them. Their release contents may be altered or the schedule may be altered. Okay. Uh, and also make sure all work that the team is doing is visible. This is another very important thing that everything that the team is doing should be visible and should show up on the board. No one works on anything that is not on the board. Because if that happens, then whatever the team plan may, they may not be able to finish that work and that may increase the churn. So it is important to have all the work visible shown on the board, everything that the team does, okay? Everything that the team does. And they should, they should watch for extra work and push back. So the main thing is that you need to keep an eye on this extra work that is coming and everybody pushes back. Everybody pushes back, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the kind of uh, a common message from, from these three. I will pause here for a few seconds to answer if anybody has any questions. Any questions? Hi, uh, this is Alan here. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question because uh, oh, I, I understand Scrum works this mm -hmm. way. Um, however, I've been in a company uh, working for the past year and almost every spring we get um, we get churn, we get added items, <laughs> the spring uh -huh. backlog. Uh -huh. uh, this is a, this is, um, 
uh, this is a startup company. So there's the mm -hmm. mindset, like very, very um, fixed mindset of, uh, you know, we have a very dynamic environment. Mm -hmm. We need to quickly respond to, mm -hmm. you know, urgent uh, and new requirements, like that mm -hmm. kind of things. So that's mm -hmm. been really difficult. I'm, I wonder if this is like, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I should say n like normal or, or kind of um, something that w you have seen more in startups and, and it, it's kind of okay or should take a more um, theoretical approach and, and you know, right. try to push back more. Okay, very good, very good question. Very good question, excellent. So it is not a question of startup. It is a question of mindset. So many times when teams start, you know, working as an agile team, it is kind of a common understanding that, oh, we can, we can change very quickly. We, the team should respond to us very quickly. That's the mindset because we are agile, right? We should we should respond very quickly, and that is correct to the extent in this Scrum that you can respond uh, to new requests coming in after the current sprint is over. And if you if you think that two week is a long period of time to push a incoming request then you should start thinking about shorter sprint, maybe one week. And once you have defined that, then as per the scrum, so I'm talking about the scrum method, as per the scrum, if you keep changing your scope of work, then you really don't know if team is maturing or not. Because all the matrix that you will use to demonstrate that, will not show what the team, his team matured or not. So you will really not know what's going on. You will really not know if the team is improving or not improving. Are they maturing in the, in the agile uh, on their agility or not? So um, because what happens is that if you take the ad hoc work, it also impacts is that it increases your uh, cycle time. Cycle time is that when a team starts working on an item, how much time they, do they take to finish it, right? So if, they, if the new work comes, they may have to stop that work and do this new work. Now that they started, the counter is running for that. That is because that's work in progress. So it increases the cycle time. Now, why it is important to look at the cycle time? Because as per agile teams, you should be able to deliver things quickly. But if your cycle time, average cycle time shows increasing, then you are not doing that. Right? So, um, uh, so that is that is what will work counter for you. Your predictability will be low. Certainty, there will be high level of uncertainty. Um, you may not know uh, your velocity, what happens to your velocity. So there are a lot of impacts for that. And I will tell a little bit later uh, if you have a situation like things are changing very fast, then what sh should you do? I will I will talk to you about that. There is there may be a genuine reason for that. Okay, and hold on for that. All a good question though. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's move on. So this was another breakout room activity which I wanted to, but uh, because the breakout room is not working, so let's spend maybe two three minutes on this, or maybe at the most five. So after hearing all this, uh, if you face this, the churn kind of thing in your, uh, in your team, what will you do?
What will you do to reduce or eliminate churn? Hey, MK, Elliot here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, very good. Awesome. Well, I, I think I might probably start in the absence of any context with just making sure that the PO is empowered um, and that mm -hmm. we, we have a, an ability to say no uh, to things yeah. that are not emergencies. Uh, to, to me, that that that's the, the most frequent root cause of issues like that, uh, at least with teams that I've worked with. Yes, absolutely. I think that's that's very, very uh, valid and uh, very appropriate. So PO is uh, and PO may not be doing it because PO may not know how to do it or they may need some coaching or mentoring. Uh, yes, I think that's a, that's a that's that's a good place to start with. Yep. Yeah, just Absolutely. so POs need mentoring and coaching. Big thing in my orbit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, what happens is that uh, people who have not played this kind of a role, uh, they may lack, lack education and uh, knowledge and experience. Uh, so they may need some coaching and mentoring. And many teams, uh, you know, they don't see the need for that and have issues. Uh, so yeah, uh, some coaching and mentoring will be very uh, helpful for uh, PO, Scrum masters, even uh, you know managers, uh, because the managers may still have that command control kind of a mindset. Yeah, what else? I would add to that to to also coach the resources because some people just don't know how to say no, especially if it's somebody who's uh, in a leadership role. They feel compelled to do whatever they're being asked to do. So just yes. coaching them and making them aware of what the proper process is and to, to come back to the scrum master, the product owner and say, hey, you know, I need help with this. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. And. And there is a way to push back, you know, you can say, OK, uh, you need this, uh, you know, we will will handle it in the next sprint and you will get it in the at the end of the next sprint. And uh, they may say it is urgent. So may I know what is the reason for urgency or is it so much urgent that we have to leave our planned work and take this one? So so, yeah, I think pushback is 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 important. Yeah. Yeah. OK, all right, good. So uh, now our next part is the quiz. So here is the quiz. So uh, everybody go to menti.com if they are ready. So. Um, <clears throat> so there will be five questions. And if you have not participated in the quiz, it runs like one by one. The questions will come and you answer. If you answer right, you get some score. And if you answer right and answer fast, you get more scores. So at the end, the scores are compiled and then winner is decided. So this is kind of a uh, little fun here. So we'll we'll start with uh, the first one. Which is not an example of churn. OK. <clears throat> So it was not OK, <laughs> the, which is not an example. So maybe you already read what is the example of an agile term. OK, um, so uh, one of you uh, responded right. So let's see what uh, uh, what we get here. So Embryal uh, the one who responded right. Uh, others won't get any points because their answers were wrong. So now let's go to second question here. OK. <clears throat> So release predictability will affect only the stakeholder. Team morale will affect the team. Burnout will affect both. <clears throat> so let's see. <clears throat> so let's say leaderboard. OK, Elliot is leading now. All right. So 
Okay, this should be pretty straightforward. Okay, most of you got it right. So let's see what does it do to the leaderboard. Okay, Embryal is again, come back. Uh, let's go to the next one. So who should they escalate? Yeah, most of you got it right. Let's say if there is any change. Okay, Embryl is still leading. And we have our last question here. Okay, it's the responsibility of product owner, not scrum master. Okay, let's see who is the final winner. Okay, Alan is the final winner. Congratulations, Alan. Uh, if you email me or Philip and tell me what price you would like to have from the given one, we will we'll send you uh, one of your prices. Okay. All right. Let's move on. So in conclusion, uh, if churn is present, team is not self-empowered and effective, right? Educate organization on agile principles and mindset. Coach product owner and scrum master to prevent churn. Coach team to be self-managed. Measure and review churn on a regular basis. Now, if you did all of this and still there is a lot of ad hoc work that comes and that's the kind of nature of the work. That's the kind of thing there. Then uh, if there is a consistent churn, that may be an indicator that you should be a Kanban team rather than a Scrum team. So that's important to note. So if you have priorities changing so often that you cannot even sustain a one week sprint, then probably Scrum is not a good model for you. You should think Kanban or Scrumban or something else, but not Scrum. Scrum will create churn and it will. The planning is not meaningful at all. Your time you're spending on planning is not no use. So you don't don't. Somebody was asking about the startup and this issue. So think about that. Is Scrum right model for you? OK, I'm not saying change it, but think about it. Think about Kanban, think about Scrum, think about other ways of implementing Agile. Uh, there are uh, very few references that I was talking about, so there are some here. Uh, our next Lunch and Learn will be about sprint planning, so join that on November 17 uh, at uh, noon central through projectmanagement.com. We are doing our next PMP training starting from number five. It goes for four or five weeks. Uh, we do classes on Saturdays, to Saturdays mornings, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays evenings. Uh, we have a early bird running until October 22nd. And after 22nd, the price goes up. So if you are looking for it or you know somebody looking for it, this is, this is a good chance to get um, your PMP. Um, this is the way to get your one PDU from this webinar, and you will receive a copy of this flight deck, uh, so you don't have to make a note of it. It it will it will be there, okay. But uh, claim your PDU before end of November, uh, otherwise the uh, claim code will expire. Uh, there are a lot of other training coming up, uh, agile, non-agile, and uh, leadership and all that. So if you go to our training uh, area, you will you will find it. OK, so few minutes left if um, anybody has any questions. 
or if you want to reach out to me here my contact information anybody has any questions and i'll let me stop uh, presenting uh, and enable my camera so you can see me okay anybody has any questions not off the top of my head uh, well done appreciate it thank you okay all right likewise okay. elliot here yeah. that was super clear yeah. and helpful thank you very much very good thank you thank, thank you that was very helpful okay all right thank you